Uh, my name is Bobby Jean Wagoner. This is my son. His name was John E. Lawrence Jr. And he was killed. He was murdered on December 20th, uh, 2004. My name is Jaquita Bell, and this is my mother, Cheryl Denise Phillips. She was murdered May 2006 on the 23rd day. Whew. It was my graduation. My name is Samantha Milliken. This is my son, Stephen Dundon Milliken. He was robbed and shot on December the 26th of 2012, and he was pronounced dead the 27th of 2012. My name is Barbara Brown, and this is a photo of my son, Antoine Finney, and he was murdered on June the 4th of 2001. My name is Erica Fletcher. This is my twin brother, Eric Fletcher. I lost him on August the 5th, 2006. My name is Lachelle Bigsby. This is my son, Ronquez Bigsby. He was murdered at the age of 14, August the 11th, 2010. Technology that someone will come forth with these perpetrators that they'll come to light, fess up for the things that they have done, that these women may get some peace, Father God, that they may be able to move on knowing that justice has been served. And now, Lord, we ask that you would strengthen each and every one of these mothers and grandmothers, Lord God, and the families that they have been going through such hardship, Lord God, since these murders have been committed. Lord, we pray for the perpetrators, Lord God, that you would change their heart, Lord God, that they would want to do the right thing. And we ask that you would bless their families, all of these families that are here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I would just like to show you all this picture of my son, John, John Lawrence Jr., again. He was killed, shot, and robbed December the 20th, 2004, five days before Christmas. He was lured up on 40th, up on Taylor Mary Court by a phone call by a young lady, Rokisha, which lured him up there in, in, in his car. Now, he was approached by three guys, which we know him. One of the guys have sat in my house and ate. And like I say, they shot him. They robbed him. They shot him three times. They drove off in his car, left him there. They took the golds out of his mouth. He had pullouts. They took the golds out of his mouth. They left my son there to die. Like I said, the police, when he come to my house, he didn't even know he had a car. And they found the car out at some park, a civilian somewhere, wherever it is. But like I said, the guys that shot him, one guy is serving time. They gave him three, 23 years, day by day. The way I feel, my justice still has not been served. There was three guys. I feel like they all should have took the fall. They all, it shouldn't be, none of them been able to walk around. My son's life was taken. It was just stole from him. Like I say, he's a father of two. He got two girls, got to grow up without their father. One of them is having problems. She got to, uh, having to go to therapy because she can't deal with it. I mean, it's, it's just bad. And, um. Uh, I can say if, uh, I mean, no worries. I mean, my life is 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 not together. I mean, I I mean, since my son's been gone, I'm I'm not together, and I don't think I ever be together. I miss my son dearly. I think about him every day, and there's not a day to go past. He was my first child, my only son. He was 21 years old, just starting his life. Worked every day, worked every day, and. Uh, Believed in the Lord, he sung here with me in the church choir. So, um, so I have to say, I just like to say, justice to me is not served. When it's, if it takes three people to commit a murder, they all need to go take the fall for us. Not one, they all need not being able to walk around out there to, to do something else. To, I mean, from what I understand, they've been in trouble since then, but it should have stopped at the first murder. It should have stopped. Like I said, the killing has got to stop. My grandson now is six years old. When I look at him every day, I'm scared. 
I'm scared for him. I'm scared for him now, and he's only six years old. Because this world, I mean, it's the people in the world. It's, it's got to stop. On December the 26th, 2012, around 6 p.m., my son was called by a few of his friends because they was interested in buying his studio equipment so he could have the money to buy his equi uh, equipment to start work with on the following day. So he went to Trinity Hills Apartments, which is located off of Weiss Creek Pike. And when he got there, they got all the equipment out of the car, walked it to the breezeway, and then three of his friends came out of their pants with guns and told him to lay on the ground. They pat him down, took his phone, and then allowed him to go back to the car. And then as soon as he got back to the car, they opened up fire on the car and the bullet hit my son in the brain stem. So um, he knew his killers. He thought they was his friends. And what I would like to have done, I don't want any revenge. Only thing I would like to have done is justice. My twin brother, life was taken on August the 5th, 2008. Um, around nine something Saturday morning, uh, going down Broadley Parkway toward Hart Lane, a shot was fired and hit the car. He um, later died in the hospital at Vanderbilt. He died on the day of his firstborn um, son, Carrick Fletcher. Um, all I want to take place is justice, like she said before, um, to get another person off the street before they take someone else's son, brother, cousin, you know, before they get killed. That's all. My son, Antoine Fennick's life was taken on June the 4th in 2001. What I can remember him leaving with the guy that I feel like had something to do with his murder. He, and when he left, he was never seen alive again. They, he, I believe he was more than one person. They killed him in one area and then took his body and threw it in another area in North Nashville in an alley on Delta Avenue. Um, when they found him, they had taken his clothes off and just left him in his underwear and his T-shirt and had him duct tape. He had one child at the time and another one was born 18 days after we buried him. So I'm wanting justice for my son too. It's been 12 years, but it still feel like yesterday. And it's not a day to go by that I don't think about him. I'm quite sure his brother and sister, his mother, father, uh, think about it too. I just want justice. Um, this is my son, Ronquez Bigsby. His life was taken August 11, 2010. He was 14 years of age. Um, it took place in James Casey Homes on South Day Court. Um, the last thing I remember is my son leaving, and he told me, Mom, I'll be right back. And those was the last words I had with my son. Um, the next thing I remember is my cousin coming into the house telling me that my son had been shot. Um, I really don't have answers, no leads, no nothing. Um, I can't really tell you what happened. I just know that he was shot. He was hit once in the chest and as he turned to run, he was hit again, again in his in his lower back, and he was dead on arrival to the hospital. Um, all I want is justice, that's all I want. I don't want no revenge, I want justice. I don't care if it's today, tomorrow, next year, I'ma keep pushing for justice. founder, president, and CEO of the Partners in the Struggle organization here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, Partners in the Struggle organization uh, supports murder victims' families, as well as speaking out against the senseless murders and gun violence here in Nashville, uh, murder victims here in Nashville and nationally. Um, past two days we've been uh, doing what is called a uh, fourth annual Unsolved Murder Weekend, uh, and our goal is to bring families uh, together 
uh, who loved ones have been murdered, but are yet still unsolved. Um, yesterday we came together uh, to do a, uh, a prayer service, uh, kind of like prayer service, just to get the families out and uh, have them rejoice with other families who loved ones have been murdered yet unsolved. Uh, and it was a pretty good, you know, it was a pretty good time. You know, uh, a couple of tears were shed, uh, but we uplifted them in, in, in so many different ways. And families just knowing that there's someone out there other than themselves who are going through the same thing they've been going through over a number of years. Uh, today, uh, we continue by doing uh, unsolved murder video. Uh, this is a video that uh, uh, was created by uh, Brother Michael Northern, Mike Check, uh, and he. Uh, with his uh, studio uh, experience, came in and take uh, footage of our parents uh, uh, who loved ones were murdered yet still unsolved. Um, very powerful. Uh, I think this is really going to be um, something that we're going to be able to use. It's going to be powerful. Uh, the video that has been used will be uh, placed on YouTube where it can be seen across the universe in hopes that we can gather clues uh, to these unsolved murders in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I want to introduce um, Pastor Marcus Campbell, who has been a vital instrument, um, collaborating with me in several events through, throughout this year with Partners in the Struggle. I uh, love this man. He's a man of God. Uh, there's never been a time that I hasn't, haven't asked him to uh, uh, use his church home to conduct an event. If it's a kind of like prayer vigil, just doing something to uplift our kids, our youths in the neighborhood. Um, and so uh, I, I applaud his efforts and just having my back, and he know I have his as well. So this is Pastor Marcus Campbell, who is a pastor of uh, my common missionary Baptist church. Yes, I'm Pastor Campbell, pastor of Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church, and uh, my role is to support partners in the struggle in Earl Jordan and the uh, mothers of these murdered victims to help them get their voice out, uh, that maybe someone will be able to uh, go back and say that I remember what had happened on that day that will help bring the perpetrators in that have taken their children's lives. Uh, I'm here to support them through prayer, through the word of God, and uh, just let them know that they're not in this alone. And uh, I think this is an awesome thing of support that Partners in the Struggle is doing with the families, uh, that they come together to support each other because they're all in the same boat. Uh, but they find strength through their voices being heard. So we just ask that you all will please try to remember something to help bring these perpetrators in, that they may have closure and may have peace, that they may move on in their lives. God bless you.